So in today's video, I'm going to be showing us how to make a rolling collar jacket. Like you can also call it a short collar as well. So, but today we are going to be crossing it over, okay? It's going to be like a double-breasted rolling collar jacket. So this is going to be a crossover rolling collar, a crossover that is going to be having a rolling collar, okay? So that is why I have a full front bodies here. So this is my bust line. This is my bust point, and this is my waist. And this is my hip, okay? It's going to be as long as a dress. It's, it's, as, it's going to be as long as the knee level. That is why I have my basic dress drafted around here, okay? This is the front. We're going to be working with a full front dress. And I'm, I'm going to be working with a quarter back dress, okay? So I have my back dress here drafted there. And I have my front dress drafted here. So the first thing you want to do when you want to make a rolling collar jacket, okay? You need to find your break point. So break point simply means where you want your collar to break from. That means where you want your collar to start from, or rather where you want your button stand to start. So in some cases, I'm going to be linking some different pictures around here, okay, during this video. In some cases, you see that some people's jacket, is, uh, the collar is on that bust, is to the waistline, so it all depends on you, is your preference. If you want to take your break point to your waistline, you want to take your break point to your other boss, or you want to take it to your boss point, okay? Wherever you want your collar to start breaking from, that is where your button stand will start from, okay? So for this video today, we are going to be making a rolling collar, and it's going to be a double-breasted one. So that means... I'm going to be crossing it over. If you have not watched my crossover bodies, so try to watch my crossover bodies, okay? I'm going to be crossing it over to the other side of my dart. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using my waistline as my break point. So I'll label that place break point, okay? I want to use my waistline as my break point. So I'll take my straight ruler and make sure your neckline stays around 3 inches to 3.5 inches, okay? Yeah, I have my neckline to be 3.5 inches. So, I'm going to take my ruler like so. I'm going to use my ruler to connect it down to my waistline because that's where I'm going to be using as my break point. So, I'll mark a straight line all the way up like so. Okay? Then I'll continue with my ruler to take that all the way down, straight down. Okay, can you guys see what we, what we have done here? So this is exactly the first thing that you are going to be doing. So the next thing you want to do now, so here automatically becomes my roll line. Eh? So I'll label this part as my roll line. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do, I'm going to be adding my button stand from that part down. So I'm going to take the inches of my button stand. I'm using one inch as my button stand, okay? So I'm going to measure one inch, one inch, all the way to the end of my dress. So I'll take a ruler, then I'll connect that together. Super. So I'm going to be using a black pen here to do this alteration so that you guys can understand. So now I'm going to be making another road line which is the roll line that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to now be connecting my roll line like so to my bust, to my button stand, okay? So this is exactly what I'm just doing because my roll line is supposed to touch my button stand, okay? So I'm just going to put S mark here, assuming that that's to show that we're not making use of this one. We're not making use of that black roll line because my roll line supposed to touch up to my button stand so i did this first line so that you will know that you are going to take this roll line to meet up with your dart so now i added one inch for my button stand so automatically this this becomes my where i'm going to be inserting all of my buttons okay so the next thing you are going to do here after getting out your roll line you are going to now come here and bring out your color shape so the first thing you want to do, you want to take your back bodies, your back dress. So this can be a top, but I'm just going this. I'm just going to make this pattern in a dress, okay? So you are going to take your tape measure. You are going to measure around 
your back neckline okay what i have here in my back neckline is four inches and i'm going to be adding 0 0.5 inches to that so i'll come to this line and i'll measure it there so i'm going to be putting four inches on that line then i'll add 0 0.5 inches for same allowance okay so i'll call that part back neck very important okay i've called that part back neckline so the next thing you want to do you want to find the wideness of your collar how bold you want your collar to be i'll be leaking some pictures down here during this video some color you can see they are very thin some are fat some are white it's totally your preference as a designer you are just going to be choosing how wide or how bold you want your collar to be that is totally your choice okay so i'm going to come here i'm going to be using four 0.5 inch as the boldness of my collar okay and this line should be on angle 90 it shouldn't be straight okay if i'm going to be taking a straight line i'll do like this so i'm going to do it up on angle 90 4.5 inches that is how bold i want my collar to be so i mark that there then i'll take my ruler to mark out my 4.5 inches so instead of marking it straight like this, I'm going to take it up. It's like an angle 90, okay? Don't miss that. It's an angle 90. So that is the uh, boldness of my collar. So now the next thing I'm going to be doing is to take my collar shape all the way down to this part. So I'm just going to be using the help of a curve ruler because I want it to be slightly curved, okay? So I'm going to use this curve ruler to see if this can be able to give me the shape that I want. So first thing first, that is why pattern drafting is so fun and so interesting. I can use a pencil till I'm happy with the shape, okay? If I'm not happy with the shape, I can alter it as much as I will want it, okay? So let's see what my pattern master can do for me as well. So, so I think this is good. Let's see. So, I'll just now use my marker pen to bring that out properly. I think I'm happy and I'm okay with that shape that I have there. I'm going to now use my marker pen to brighten that out, okay? So, I'm going to do like so. So, this is the shape I want for my collar. So now my rolling collar is practically ready. So the next thing that I need to do now, and don't forget this part is on angle 90, okay? Angle 90, and it's, the distance between here and here is the boldness of your collar, okay? The distance between your, your front neck or your shoulder point to this part is the your back neck width, okay? So I'm going to now take my scissors. I'm going to cut out all of these parts, see? So this is exactly what we have now. So I'm going to now be cutting out from my bottom stand like so. So the boldness of your collar is totally your choice, okay? You can use any wideness that you prefer as a designer, okay? Depends on what you want. That is what you are going to use. So I'll just keep this aside. It's not needed anymore. So I'm just going to cut every other part that I don't need away, okay? So when you want to do this, you can use a shoulder dart or a princess dart, okay? But this is my basic dress is drafted with a waist that okay so if i'm going to be sewing it i'll just i'm just going to transform it into a princess that okay so you can do that it's advisable that you use a princess that or use a shoulder that when you're making a, a jacket like this okay so that every part will just be sitting perfectly and flawless okay I already have a video on my channel where I created the princess that so you're just going to make your princess that around here So the last thing that I'm going to be showing us today in this so let's just fold in our collar So I can fold in my collar from the roll line like we can already see the roll line. Okay I'll fold in my collar from my roll line To see if I'm happy with the shape. Okay, so this is what I have so I can just eradicate some little parts that I'm not happy with I, I can see that this part is too curvy, okay? I just want to take it out a little bit. 
so i don't like it it's looking too curvy around here so i'm just going to eradicate it okay that is why pattern drafting is so fun i say it all the time you have all the time to utter anything that you are doing that you are not happy with okay so i can see that part is too curvy and i'm not liking it so i'm just going to reduce it and smoothing that out okay so i think i'm happy with the shape of my color so this is totally your choice guys as a designer you have to be able to create something that you will like okay so this is how my color will be formed around my jacket and this one you are going to cut to you bring for the other one and they'll be joined together and you have your roll color jacket or a short color as you would like to call it so the last thing i'm going to be showing us today is how to create a facing because when you see a jacket you see sometimes you want to use a plain fabric to come out on the outside just to give it a more distinctive look or you want to use the same fabric that you are using because you are not going to be able to use your lining to show outside of your color okay so to create a facing for your jacket you are going to be using from your bottom stand like so just watch what I'm doing. From my bottom stand, I'm going to be using a standard measurement of 2.5 inches, okay? 2.5 inches, like so. So I'll come to my shoulder joining. My shoulder is 4.5. Half of 4.5 is 2.5, okay? I'm going to mark that out. Then I'll take a straight ruler and I'll connect these two lines together, like so. Just watch what I'm doing. So I'm going to connect from the 2.5 I took at the bottom. I'll take a straight ruler to connect them together. Okay. So this is what I will have for my facing. So I can take a tracing wheel. You take a tracing wheel to trace it out. So I'll just use my black pen to label that part facing. Okay. So you guys can see it properly facing. So from this my blue marker pen to that part, I'll just place another paper underneath this and I'm just going to use tracing wheel, I'll just trace it out and I'll have a separate piece. You, you, you don't need to cut that out, you just put another fabric, another paper underneath it and you trace out your facing and you can cut your facing separate from your line, okay? So this part, you are going to cut your main fabric in full like this. So when it comes to your inner line, which you are going to be using to turn your, your main fabric, this part will be cut as a facing which is the fabric you desire to come outside of your collar and this part will not be cut as your lining okay that's just the difference so I'll, let me just also label your lining should in case some of you want to try l i n i n g this is the lining part and this is the facing part so i'm talking about the inner what you are going to be using to turn it and your rolling collar pattern is ready Remember, this can be done in a top. It can be a short jacket, okay? But we're going to be making this into a dress. That is why I made it this long. So now, we'll come to the back pattern, okay? So uh, your back neckline should stay one inch. It's very important. Your back neckline is one inch de deep. And the same wideness you have for the front, that's what you have for the back. Like I said, your neckline should be between 3 inches to 3.5 inches wideness, okay? But for the back, the deepness should be 1 inch. And back neck depth should be 1 inch when you are making this kind of jacket. So the only thing and the last thing that we are going to be doing for the back, you are just going to come to the center back and the waist area because the back is going to be cut too. You are going to cut two for the back okay so i don't know if most of you are familiar with the zip budge technique you are just going to come to your waistline and go in into your waist by 0 0.5 inch just the same way you want to do a zip budge technique okay you want to create a nice back shaping you want to create a nice flat shaping at the back okay you want your back jacket to be flattened and to be well relaxed so that's exactly what the only thing you're just going to be doing for your back pattern, okay? So I'm going to do that. Can you see? Then I'll take my scissors, I'll cut this out. So when I'm cutting on my fabric, I'm going to add another 0 0.5 inch that I'm going to use to join it back. So I'll cut this out so that you guys can understand. This is no longer going to be needed in my, in my pattern, okay? 
this is very very important don't forget it even when you do it for a short jacket you should do this okay the back is going to be having a center back seam so you can see that the waist is deepened in a little bit so when i place it on my fabric to cut i'm just going to now use my tape measure to add around 0.5 inches 0.5 inch all around it okay so i hope you guys find this video interesting and remember it's a double breasted neckline jacket okay it's a double breasted is a double breasted jacket with a rolling collar so the reason why it's called double breasted because it's crossing over to the other side of your dart okay that is why it is. so you can also do yours and, and create it in the middle okay but i want this pattern exactly to cross over to the other side so i hope you guys find this video interesting so if you find this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share, to like and please subscribe and turn on the notification bell, okay? And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!